<laughs> Hi guys. I guess it is your lucky night. It is a a lovely Wednesday night, September 20th, 20, uh, 23, counting down the final days of the infamous summer of 2023. And since I might have missed a couple of days, uh, you get a, a two-pack ranting today. So uh, I want to thank Alert Leader, Alert Leader, Alert Listener, Joseph Gowers. I don't know Joseph, but I do appreciate Joseph sending me one of the most bizarre stories I have ever encountered on medium.com. Uh, now, I follow a lot of people, and I thought that I had heard, uh, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I thought I really knew the Doomer community on medium.com, and here comes another one. This fellow, Chris Jeffries, Chris, Chris Jeffries, calling himself the homeless romantic. I have no clue, guys. I do not know if, if, if this descent in, into weirdness, that I don't know whether this doomer humor, this sick, twisted doomer humor, is intentional or unintentional. I honestly don't. I, I do not know if this guy is a master satirist and, and black, uh, ironic humorist, or if he is, uh, or maybe he's eating, uh, not bath salts, trank. I don't know, but I like this. I, I, I have to give this dude some credit. I'm probably not going to read this entire long piece I will just hit some of the highlights, and I'll put the link, and you can finish it yourself. So you tell me, is this a joke? Is this doomer humor, or does this guy actually believe this unadulterated horseshit? Take it away. The homeless romantic Chris Jeffries. Scientists, scientists say humanity could descend into cannibalism by 2060. There you go. Listen up, folks. Cannibalism and late stage climate change. Why and how it might happen and how to prevent it. How to prevent cannibalism? Well, I'm just going to, spoiler alert, I'm just going to jump to the end. Like, like so many other things, there is one way to prevent cannibalism. Okay, before he even gets to it, because I'm not sure I'm going to get that far, there is one way to prevent cannibalism. That is to keep your pecker in your pants you do not let your knickers down, and you do not, you, you, you know, uh, bring onto this planet, you know, some little bundle of joy for your next door neighbor, you know, to serve up on a shish, shish, shish kebab skewer, uh, you know, after they've already eaten your dog. You know, when your next door neighbor runs out of his last can of beanie weenies and he eats your dog, uh, you know, as Bill Gates says, who the hell do you think they're going to eat next? So, if you do not want your child to be cannibalized, don't have any children. A, a, a person who is never born can never be eaten by another human. But of course, you still have your own long pork ass to worry about. Anyway, so what is cannibalism? Cannibalism is the act of consuming another individual of the same species as food. It is a common ecological interaction in the animal kingdom. 
and has been recorded in more than 1,500 species. Human cannibalism is well documented, both in ancient and recent times. There are many different reasons why animals and humans engage in cannibalism. Number one, because they're hungry would be the number one reason. In some cases, it is a survival mechanism, meaning you got to eat. For example, if an animal is starving, it may eat its own offspring or other members of its species. Yes, cannibalism can also be a way for animals to regulate their populations. Huh or to compete for resources. And there you go. Well, you know, we're looking for creative ways to uh, regulate our population. So let's just start eating each other. You know, if, 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 if everybody on the planet, like 8 billion people, so if everybody just ate each other, would that mean four billion people? Okay, okay. Well, I guess the first round. So everyone pick somebody and eat them tonight. So we'll have four billion people tomorrow. Okay. So then tomorrow night, the remaining four billion of us, if we just eat another human, we'll be down to two billion. Then we'll be down to one billion on the Let's see, 8 billion, the sec first day, 8 billion, second day, 4 billion, third day, 2 billion, fourth day, 1 billion, the fifth day, we meet the Georgia Guidestones of 500 million. In five days, in five days, we could save this planet. If, if everybody would just eat another human each day and in the next five days the population of this planet would be 500 million people and the Georgia Guidestones uh, well the former Georgia Guidestones could uh, be our guiding light okay uh, Speaking of cannibalism, uh, I think in no article is complete uh, with cannib about cannibals than Hannibal the Cannibal. Uh, <laughs> I love an article about cannibals. <clears throat> anyway, okay. So, in humans, cannibalism has been practiced for a variety of reasons, including survival. There you go. Human cannibalism has been documented in cases of extreme starvation, such as during famines or shipwrecks. Ritual. There you go. Uh, mental illness. Be careful. Did you realize that some people with bipolar disorder, some people with bipolar disorder may engage in cannibalism as a symptom of their illness. Now, there is a video out there somewhere of somebody who looks a lot like me sitting on a rock in the middle of a creek eating his mother's ashes, literally dipping his finger and eating his mother's ashes. So there you go. So maybe some people with bipolar disorder uh, may engage in cannibalism. So if you know anybody with bipolar disorder, I would not go to their Airbnb all right. Cannibalism is generally considered to be a taboo in most cultures. However, there have been some 
exception. So here we go. For example, we, you've heard about these people, the four people of Papua New Guinea, practice cannibalism as a way to honor their deceased relatives. And there you go. They believe that by eating the flesh of their loved ones, they were absorbing their spirits and keeping them alive. Now, I'm pretty sure that they were eating the flesh of their loved ones who had already died and they were not killing. So I, I'm just going to have to break in here, guys. I've, I, I've actually had this debate uh, more than once in my life. I think there is a big difference between eating a person who is already dead and killing somebody to eat them. I see a, a major difference between eating someone uh, who's already died than, than killing someone and then eating them. Some people disagree with me. I, I honestly don't have that big of a problem with eating dead people if you're hungry. There, there's going to be plenty of dead people to be eating. Anyway, okay. All right. And, uh... <laughs> Guys, th th this th th this is one of the great lines in medium.com history. Okay. <clears throat> Cannibalism can be a very dangerous practice, both physically and psychologically. Eating human flesh can transmit diseases. Okay, guys, listen up. In case you did not realize that, additionally... The act of cannibalism, the act of cannibalism, can be very traumatic for the person who is eaten. Cannibalism can be very traumatic for the person who is eaten. And, and uh, you know, I never really thought about this. Is cannibalism traumatic? for the person that's eaten. Now, again, it gets back to whether the person was alive. I mean, can a dead person suffer trauma of being eaten by their fellow human? I mean, if you're, it, it kind of gets back to what I was just saying. I don't think that if you're already dead, that is that particularly traumatic to be being eaten. Uh, I, I honestly don't think a dead person is, is going to be traumatic to a dead person to be eaten. I mean, I mean wh wh why the hell do they care? Uh, now, again, it might be traumatic you know, as I was saying earlier, to be killed for a live person to be killed by a cannibal. There is a difference uh, between a subtle difference being traumatized by being eaten or traumatized by being killed to be eaten. But it's not just traumatic for the person being eaten it can also be very traumatic for the person who does the eating, according to the uh, homeless romantic. Uh, he sounds like he's speaking a little bit from experience here. Uh, I'm still waiting for what the scientists are talking about this happening by 2060. Uh, Anyway, guys, this uh, this article just gets stranger and stranger. But then he gets into cannibalism in late stage climate change. There you go. Uh, okay.
Okay, so climate change, you know, just follow the dots. Follow the dots. Climate change is already having a devastating impact on food production and distribution around the world. And so in the future, it is, you know, climate change is likely to cause even more widespread and severe food shortages. And as Bill Gady will tell you, if people are starving, they may resort to cannibalism in order to survive. This is especially likely if there is no other food available. All right, cannibalism is especially likely if there is no other food available. This guy, this homeless romantic, he's a lot of things, but he's not an, he's not a clueless moron. Uh, I, I mean, he has, he has figured out that cannibalism can be traumatic for the person being eaten, and that cannibalism is especially likely if there is no other food available. There you go. Uh, cannibalism is also more likely to occur in situations where there is a, a breakdown of law and order. So, climate change could lead to mass migration, conflict over resources, and the collapse of governments. And in these situations, people may be more likely to turn to cannibalism. There you go. Okay. So, uh, then he breaks it down how cannibalism might happen in late stage climate change. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail here about well, food shortages, uh, mass migration, uh, collapse of governments uh, without a government to provide support and security, people may be more likely to turn to cannibalism. And we've already talked about uh, mental illness, so climate change could lead to an increase in mental illness. And so, as he just told you, people with bipolar disorder, there's a good chance they will eat you. So, I mean, this all makes perfect sense to me. I am still waiting for one... I, I have failed to see one footnote or a link to any sort of scientist saying that humans will convert to cannibalism by 2060. So, how to prevent cannibalism and a late stage climate change dystopian future? There are a number of things that can be done to prevent cannibalism. There you go. Invest in sustainable agriculture. Build strong social safety nets. Promote peace and cooperation. Address the root causes of can I'm sorry, the root causes of climate change. And don't forget, provide mental health support. So, you know, people with bipolar disorder don't turn into cannibals. Okay, how about create and maintain food banks and other food assistance programs? Well, I don't know if Christopher has watched Soylent Green. I think, uh, I, I think the idea of, of creating and maintaining food banks and other food assistance programs uh, as this whole shit show comes down is already, you might want to tune in to Soylent Green to see how that would look like. I'm not sure this one's a good idea. Provide education and training on food preparation. Ah, uh, that could backfire. 
of course, promote sustainable food consumption practices. There you go. Support research and development of new agricultural technologies. It is important to note that there is no single solution to preventing cannibalism. But there most certainly is, and I already mentioned it to you, Christopher, it's never occurred to Christopher that there sure as shit is one single solution to preventing cannibalism and late stage climate change. It is the same thing to prevent uh, the sixth mass extinction, for instance. In case you missed it earlier, keep your pecker in your pants. Do not let your knickers down. Don't do it. Don't do it. And you will prevent climate change. Yes. Anyway, is that it? And he has a bunch of, uh, of links. There is one comment, not one person has clapped for this story. One human being on 8 billion people on this planet commented on this story. That would be Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles. Uh, and I think we've already heard this. First, uh, the quote, the act of cannibalism can be very traumatic for the person who is eaten. Who needs George Carlin or Bill Hicks anymore? This dude is a riot. How about this for a suggestion to prevent capitalism? Keep your pegger in your pants and don't let your knickers down so your little unborn bundle of joy will not be served up on a skewer to your next door neighbor when he gets to his last can of beanie weenies and he has already eaten your dog. <sighs> oh, it is strange times on the planet, guys, and uh, you, you just got to laugh. You just got to appreciate that doomer humor. Anyway, I got to go over to Netflix and catch up after my stressful week. So, uh, I guess in the morning, I'm taking my dog to get his boil lanced. My Sancho has managed to get, uh, if you're familiar with this thing called burdick, and it's these little uh, nasty little sharp seed pods. Somehow Sancho has managed to get a seed pod literally stuck in his belly up under his skin and uh, so I'm going up, and this Amish woman and I, we are going to slice open Sancho's stomach tomorrow and dig out a seed pod out of his stomach. I get to look forward to that tomorrow, and then I get to go to my first doctor's appointment. The last time I was at a doctor, at least in the United States, 20 years ago to get my uh, my ears blown out. Uh, another week on the planet. It is my birthday on Friday. The last day of summer of 2023. I can start my 65th. I will wrap up. 64 years, 64 turns of the cosmic screw, wrapping up the last day of summer, staying one step ahead of the cannibals. I highly suggest you get out there and stay one step ahead of the cannibals while you still can. 
And don't forget, guys, no music on a dead planet. Bye, guys.